All right, 57 kilograms. This is an amazing weight. This is one that has had a ton of discussion over the last year and change ever since last year's US Open and the results of Final X and the World Championships. And now the Pan Am Olympic Games qualifier. Everyone's been talking about 57 kilograms. It's a weight full of stars. And it just got a lot more interesting last week at the last chance where you saw high school sophomore, 17 year old Jax Forrest win the last chance Olympic trials qualifier, punching his ticket to the Olympic trials. And this is a weight, 57 kilograms, that's gonna have three high school wrestlers in it. Luke Lillidal, Jax Forrest, and Marcus Blaze. All three are um, really incredible and, and absolutely belong. And Luke Lillidal, we saw what he could do at senior nationals. Jax Forrest proved his medal uh, as well at, at last chance, and Marcus Blaze has had incredible success as well, making age level world teams and winning medals. So that's why he's in this bracket. But the question right now is, how do you seed this weight, right? And the interesting thing with Olympic years is you have this condensing of weights where you have guys that wrestle at other weight classes that go up or go down and you have to figure out based on all this sort of, you're putting all the data together and trying to come up with some seeds. Well, there's some things we do know about 57 kilograms. One, Vito Arujao, because he is a returning senior world medalist, gets a bye to the semifinals, okay? That's a weird bracketing thing that you don't often see, and I don't think I've ever seen outside of the Olympic trials, but that's how we do it. We want to, USA Wrestling wants to incentivize these guys who win medals. They wanna give them some slight benefit um, for bringing home that senior, senior level medal. So that's what Vito gets. He's on the bottom side semi, okay? So the question, Who's down there with him? Well, if you look at Kozak's seeding predictions, it looks like Thomas Gilman and Dayton Fix will both be down. There's the, the two and three seeds. Now, they're sort of the two and three because Vito's out there, but just, just play along. Pretend that they're the two and three seed. So who will they likely have to contend with to get to Vito, right? Because that's how it'll work. Well, I think that Dayton will get the winner of Nico and Richard Figueroa based on Kozak's predictions. And it looks like Jax Forrest, Liam Cronin, Winner of that would get Thomas Gilman. Now, I'm not saying Jax Forrest is a favorite uh, or, or anything of the sort. I'm saying he is someone who's going to win some matches here. I, I firmly believe he's going to win some matches at trials. And I think he's a really interesting matchup for, for Thomas Gilman. Jax reminds me of a, a, a younger Vito Arugel. He's lanky, but he has a little more pop than you would maybe suspect, a little more explosiveness. Um, and one thing that I like about, about Jax at this weight class and down here is not only does he have a little bit of momentum, maybe a little bit of confidence, but he's right for the weight class. So he's an interesting guy to keep your eye on. And as you look at this bottom side, Dayton, Gilman, Vito, they're the three most accomplished guys down here. No doubt about it. But what do those three also have in common? It is known, documented, and reported these guys are really, really big for the weight class. Making 57 kilograms, 125 and a half, is extremely difficult for all three of them. And that's the ultimate variable, and that's one of the things for Olympic trials, a consistent theme is how will these guys function on two-hour weigh-ins down at the weight class? We've seen it not go well for really, really good wrestlers uh, in the past. We've seen it uh, last year at Final X for Thomas was you know, a performance that did not look like the Thomas Gilman we're used to watching. Uh, previous Olympic trials, James Green has made the attempt to wrestle down at 65 kilograms. This guy's a legend of 70 kilograms, but down at 65, it's just different, and he, he's not been able to compete quite the same. So that's going to be the focus for Dayton, for Vito, and for Gilman here. How did these guys look? And if you're Figueroa, Megalutis, Cronin, Forrest, hey, maybe you catch one of these guys and are not feeling great off the scale, or even that entire day and you get an opportunity to get go on a run. So this bottom half, if it plays out this way, um, could be really interesting. And if you're looking for a bracket buster, could come from down below. Now, um, one thing to note, and one thing I'll, I'll add is I do feel pretty certain it's gonna be Gilman and Dayton down here on Vito's side. So that's a really loaded side. Now, if you look up top, Zane Richards is your one seed, and I don't think that's gonna be changed. I think, by virtue of him being the returning world teamer, and with Dayton, Vito, and Gilman all declining to challenge uh, for the Pan Am spot, 
that makes me think Zayn is set at the one seed, and, and I think rightly so. So if he's the one, you want to look at that four or five. Well, Kozak thinks the four will be Nick Soriano because Nick has a, Nick has a forfeit win over Spencer Lee. Now, that, so here, one thing you should know about the seeding process is it's, it's, not a, it's not by committee. It's not going to be put to a vote. It's going to be something where basically the leadership is going to decide. So we have to wonder, are they going to value a forfeit win where Spencer didn't take the mat or not? Part of me thinks, yeah, you should. It's not Nick Seriano's fault that Spencer didn't wrestle that match. But on the other hand, how much data did you actually get from that? Because since that time, Spencer has looked unreal. He won senior nationals. He won the Farrell. He's been winning overseas. He looks, he looks really good. So I'm curious how they do that. But ultimately, a 4-5 doesn't make that much of a difference. They're going to wrestle the next round anyways. It's, uh, the way Kozak has it, it would be Spencer Lee versus Marcus Blaze in round one. Winner gets Nick Soriano. If they flip that, it would be Soriano Blaze winner gets Spencer Lee. Not that big of a difference. Luke Lillardall, Daniel DeShazer, winner gets Zane Richards. So really, you look at that, um, for me, I think Spencer Lee, you talk around, you get kind of sentiment, not just from fans, but coaches and coaches that are in and around the senior level. A lot of people think this is Spencer Lee's weight class. And I think being on top side is just an insane advantage for any of these guys. Um, I think if you're Vito Arujao, if you could choose between a buy to the semi or the top seed, looking at who's going to be where, I think you might take that top seed instead of having to go potentially through Thomas Gilman, who Thomas Gilman has been a thorn in the side of Vito Arujao over the years, especially at 57 kilograms. So it's curious how they're going to play it out. And I do think the bones of this seeding uh, prediction are right. I think Kozak's on the right track here. Of course, there's always going to be very, is there's so many variables. You have high school kids. You've got 61 kilogram guys. You got guys that only wrestle once a year. So when you factor all those things in, it is a big seeding challenge. And the bracket, as you know, can have a, will have a huge impact on, on how, uh, you know, whoever makes the team. One thing to note, for 57 kilograms, they're doing it a little bit differently for the non-qualified weight. So we're not qualified for the Olympics at 57, we're not qualified at 65. And for whatever reason, they've decided that the first session of Saturday, that's when they're gonna do the two out of three for 57 and 65. So the first two rounds of 57 and 65 will be wrestled not in the evening session, but in the um, in that morning session on Saturday of day two. So that's notable, um, particularly for the bigger guys. Right, if you're let's say Vito, Thomas, or Dayton make it to the best two out of three, well, they're gonna wrestle two matches on a two hour weigh in, and that's gonna be that's gonna be a challenge for those guys because they're they're gonna made weight day one, they got to make weight day two, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a huge challenge. So, that's another thing, that's another reason that a lot of people are, are high on Spencer Lee is because they know he's right for the weight class, not only is he you know, extremely talented, he's winning a lot, Is he, he's, you know, can wrestle from everywhere, but being the right weight is, is hugely impactful. And that's one thing that Spencer Lee has going for him. Now we know, uh, we know, we believe that the official seeds are gonna come out early next week, which is great, because we'll have the better part of a week to really dive into the potential matchups. But right now, these are the seeding projections for 57 kilograms. What do you think? How would you seed a bracket full of this many legends? 